Hello again everyone, Saki here and welcome back to another episode of Planet Zoo and when we last left off we put in these magical African dogs that seem to just, there we go, they, they sorted themselves out. But we uh, were working on our zoo here, we put in the African wild dogs and we had some unruly elephants on yonder pin over here. Uh, before we begin, let's go ahead and say hello to everyone and then we'll see if we can get a third adult elephant in here to improve the happiness a bit. We have Kixie Joe. Hello there, Kixie Joe. We'll say hello. We have uh, Hui Fung D92. Hello. We have Ricardo AC. Hello. We have Wendy back again. Hello. We have NV McKenzie back as usual. Hello. We have Snubsy. Hello. And then we have uh, Re Relit. Relit. Hello. So, luckily, uh, we're not visiting ourselves, so we got the full conservation credits. We're up to 1,000 conservation credits. Really, really good. Uh, selling, I believe it was those uh, warthogs that were 300 conservation credits a pop. Definitely uh, did wonders for us here. And it looks like we also have Red Panda Low Welfare. I believe that Red Panda can hide. What exactly is your deal there, Bowsy? Who is curled up in a ball? So it's your stress, and luckily they're hiding. That one-way glass is doing the work. Looks good. Uh, and then the Aardvarker stress, they'll go hide pretty soon. And of course, vet research is chugging along nicely. That was the last bit of Aardvark. So Noel is done researching the Aardvark. Uh, next up, right next to the entrance, was the tortoises. Uh, let's see if we can find the tortoise. The a la, 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 la giant tortoise, boom. And we'll go ahead and work on the education for that giant tortoise, hopefully driving our guest education rating up even higher. Awesome. Red-eyed red tree frog has offspring, as they do. Uh, we'll see if the uh, exhibit gets full up. Uh, one thing that we do have to be mindful of all those exhibits is the, uh, the amount of space. All right, African elephant. So ideally we'll be looking for a male. They have all females. We could get away with getting the uh, one of the younger females, the cheaper females. This adult female will be good for our uh, African elephant uh, adult rating. Uh, basically they need two and uh, we, we need three. So once that uh, female is delivered, the, the social will go up. We have a little bit of a bachelorette pad. Oh, Black Wildebeest is hungry. Hey, come on now. Hopefully, uh, hey, Keeper, get in there. So hopefully the Keeper can go ahead and do some feeding. There is a lot of animals running around like crazy, though. And uh, hopefully that will uh, fix itself pretty soon. Uh, so, what are we doing today? Let's put in another animal that we don't have. Hey, this Chinese pangolin. Yeah, we need to get these Chinese pangolin education balls up and running. Uh, as the animals, uh, were not in the pen anymore. So we'll go ahead and reset that education as well. Try to get as much education in this as possible. And already it looks like a lot of donations taking place. Uh, $1,082 at last uh, at last check and it looks like Chinese pangolin are all set as far as the education is concerned what is this is this our ambient speaker no ambience how about uh, some crickets there you go here's some ambience for you any new visitors hey Keen has stopped in we'll say hello to Keen and another 25 conservation credits for us all right so now Let's take a look at the space that we have, uh, the layout that we have, and see if we need to put down more staff facilities. I think if we put some staff facilities along this path here, we can basically extend this work area out. Uh, and then we have plenty of space down here off to the side next to our cheetah and our African wild dogs to put something uh, interesting down here. Once again, it just depends on cash and conservation credits. Uh, we don't have that many primates, so maybe a climbing uh, individual would be good to have down here. Uh, we unlock some blueprints, I believe, for some climbing. Uh, yeah, the large animal climbing frame. So as our research has grown, 
so has our blueprint. So it would be very easy to get a climbing... Yeah, uh, hopefully the keeper is on their way there. Uh, to get a climbing animal over here, uh, it's just going to depend on, um, you know, cash and conservation credits. So I will go ahead and take a look at some animal trading, see if there are any primates that we don't have that we can afford, and be right back. All right, waiting for some of our new primates to arrive. Vet research is done. Booyah. That will be on the... Nice, giant tortoise. So continue working on giant tortoise, getting a lot of education up and a lot of things bouncing back and forth. What I've done was along this um, staff path here, I've added a trade center, a keeper hut, quarantine, vet surgery, and a staff room as well. So they don't have far to go as far as taking care of these animals down here. This is all part of work zone two. And hey, what's this challenge here? Nice, adopt two different exhibit species. There's a thousand dollars for us, definitely not bad. And the first of our primates are coming in, and that is going to be thanks to old Boris here, or Darik. And Booyah, very small, we have the Japanese macaque. And uh, yeah, so we had to hire, a, or hire, we had to get a bunch of them because according to the Zoopedia, uh, it requires a base of eight in the group size. So we've made a 33,000 uh, meter square, 33,000 foot square enclosure with the one-way glass that's 10 feet tall, not climbable, uh, and everything should be fine. So let's go ahead and get some terrain up here. As you can see, plenty of terrain. We need to get rid of all of this long grass though, and it looks like it actually needs some snow. So we might be able to uh, get some um, some cooling up in here. Uh, let's see their actual uh, Zoopedia here and see what kind of temperature that they would like. Uh, looks like they like uh, negative 15 to 29 degrees Celsius, so they're okay for now. Um, and as long as it really doesn't get much hotter than this, it's going to be fine. Uh, basically what we need to do then is just put a layer of snow down uh, that will melt and become rock. Uh, essentially, and then when the, when the snow falls, uh, that snow will will fill up and everything will be good. So first and foremost, snow. Lots and lots of snow. And then as it melts, it will become rock, basically getting rid of all of this long grass. So it looks like the Japanese macaw doesn't really like uh, any kind of grass whatsoever. I mean, they like a little bit of short grass, it seems. Uh, but they are very focused on the uh, the snow. Possibly the uh, they live in uh, rocky, mountainous terrain, which the snow is going to be absolutely prevalent, which is fine. And yeah, just basically getting rid of all of this long grass. They don't want hardly any of it at all. Uh, we'll need to get some hard shelter in here for them. And there's going to be eight of the eight of them in here. So possibly a few large shelters are going to be uh, the name of the game. And there we go, all of the long grass done, and they need some actual snow. Uh, so we do need to get some coolers in here. Um, let's see, so we need to get some habitat cooling up in this piece. Uh, we need a cooler for sure. Uh, and it's almost going to be like the polar bear. Uh, let's go ahead and set it for possibly negative 2 degrees Celsius. That way we can get some actual snow up in here. Negative 4 should be fine. And we'll just uh, duplicate that over several times. Luckily, the, the range on this cooler is pretty big. So this should keep enough snow in here for us. And we'll just sort of have to uh, adjust when that temperature scan uh, sort of refreshes here. Let's see what kind of temperature we're rocking. And it is indeed dropping that temperature. I don't know if it's giving us actually any snow, but it would be cold enough to give us snow if uh, that is indeed the case. Hold on, stop, stop running there, buddy. Yeah, the snow's coming back. He's running around like crazy, stop it. Hard to catch him there. All right, so plenty of snow, plenty of rock. 
We just need our uh, navigatable climbing area and some hard shelter. All right, so let's get some beds and shelters. Um, we're sort of Japanese. Um, is there a big, ooh, Arctic shelter? 12 by something or another? I think this would fit rather well. We can put it uh, right here by the cooling area. Kind of has that Viking aesthetic. And we'll see if that, uh, yeah, there's 100% right there. Sweet. So now we just need to get some climbing area. We need 301 feet of climbing area. And luckily, our mechanic has been doing some research on climbing blueprints. Uh, how about this large climbing frame right here? How does that settle with you? Oh yeah, 1,200 climbable feet. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so the social group will come up uh, as more Japanese macaw are delivered. Um, so our habitat is at 71, and the only thing that they're lacking is plants. All right, so they do need some Asian taiga temperate plant life. So that is too easy. Let's go ahead and go continent Asia. And then biome, we need our taiga and temperate. All right, some nice big trees that we want to give up in here. All right, not that big of change. Where is our large tree? Ooh, a common ash tree. All right, that's a little bit bigger. How about uh, a cypress? Not on the climbing area, but all right, that's a little bit better. The Duharian larch. Okay, we'll get that in there. All right, so that's good, decent plant coverage. Now we need some actual coverage. Holly tree. Those are kind of small. Japanese maple. Of course, these are Japanese macaws. So some more maple trees up in here would be good. Ooh, a Scots pine. We'll put that in there. Sycamore maple. Do we have a big sycamore maple? Yes, we do. Yeah, and we're just barely crossing that, uh, that coverage. We need plants with a little bit more bushiness, it looks like. Maybe an elm tree? Ooh, the elm tree would be good. And there we go. So now we're not so far off as far as the tolerance level on the coverage goes. Now, enrichment is going to be another thing entirely. Um, I don't know if we've gotten any enrichment items for the Japanese macaw. We'll, we'll just have to take a look-see. Uh, hopefully, with all of the research that we've been doing, uh, we know a little bit of something. Oh, yes, indeed. Take a look at that. Lots of stuff for them. All right, so a frozen block of fruit. And that will be 10 out of 2 for our species food. Now we just need some toy enrichment here. Uh, how about a gift box? And that will be 50 out of 212. Let's go with the... I don't know if the forage box would count. Whoa, hey, oh, hey, oh. There we go. Yeah, unfortunately, that is not needed. All right, so what other toys do we have? The block of ice would probably be a good one. Floating block of ice. Now, where is our macaw? Where did they go? Here you are. Someone has been in a box for too long. Well, we will fix that here in a second. So 73% on that enrichment. We gave them a box, we gave them the gift. How about a sprinkler? We'll put that right over there. Obstructed, there you go. So up from 73 to 84, how about a ball? 84 to 96, there we go. So Japanese macaw are all set for their enrichment. The elephant has been in the box too long, so unbox. Don't know exactly why the elephant was uh, in the box. But that is all well and good. And that is three adults, so the elephants should be happy. All right, so Japanese macaw. Nope, ostrich about to inbreed. Let's stop that quick, fast, and in a hurry while we're at it. Female Dada. Well, I say Dada to you. All right, so now that that ostrich is out of here, yeah, we're plenty good on the adult population. Nothing to worry about there. Yeah, this is uh, nice and expansive. 
if I have to say so myself, and I do. A lot of Japanese maca are still coming in. Uh, right there, it looks like we've reached all of our adult population. We have our terrain all set up, and we have, yeah, everything set up. Enrichment, nutrition, uh, that's what we need to do last but not least is get in some food and water for our Japanese macaw. Let's put in a water pipe. And let's put in the arboreal feeding platform four meters, say right here. And hopefully our uh, our zookeepers can come and fill that up. Sable antelope about to inbreed. Well, we will fix that quick, fast, and in a hurry. Sorry, Dada. Hey, we already had a Dada. Yep, goodbye, can't escape from me. All right, African elephant arrived, ostrich traded out. Another ostrich, I tell you, this is the, uh, the inbreeding fool. Well, this is what I got for you, Rashida. Goodbye. So Jelani just can't help himself. But that's good, it's thinning our adult population, it's helping out our food. Hey, we got a few new visitors, Chris Nunn. Hello, Chris Nunn, and hello, Demon Rods. So Demon Rod's getting himself a bite to eat. That is all well and good. What do we got here? Challenges are we working on? Average exhibit species overall welfare to 86%. Okay. So I've been trying to keep an eye on our exhibit welfare, thinking everyone is all set. I am kind of curious about these Japanese macaw just to make sure that they're okay in settling into their new home. And it does look like everything is good to go. And they have the bare minimum number of adults up in here, so that is uh, fine once they get to breeding. Hopefully, we can extend that out. All right, let's get in some educational speakers here. Hopefully, these are within the power grid. No, and that's going to be a, a problem here. Looking at the power, we can only go so far as there. We might be able to extend a staff path out past here and sort of encompass this front pathway. That looks to be the, uh, the best way to go about it. Let's just get a staff path in here and extend that right past this facility here. There we go. So all we need to do is get some power up in here, please. Let's get the solar power, solar panel? Yeah, solar panel looks like it would work. Oh, wind turbine is a little bit better. So let's go ahead and put that there. And then we'll assign that to our next work group so our uh, staff can get to it. Is that a sign? Yes, indeed. Outstanding. All right, so as we were before we were so rudely interrupted, let's make sure that our educational board is all set for the Japanese macaw. And a boop. And a boop. Yeah, just sort of along this pathway. I don't know what kind of education we can get uh, from from the animal, considering how it's like brand new and whatnot, but we'll do our best. And then of course, last but not least, uh, we'll get our education stand up and flip that like a so. All right, so education is done. Let's get a few of the trash bins down and then we can get some education or um, some donation bins down as well. We want to keep this path as clean as we can. Can't see with that light there. All right, so now we just need uh, some donation bins here. Just in case people want to donate. And then we'll see how long it takes people to sort of migrate over here. Uh, as they're already looking at the African wild dog, uh, hopefully it won't take too long for them to head on over here. And I mean, this is a pretty decent view. 
It would be uh, would be better if we ran our path around the backside and reconnected it up over here, uh, which is entirely possible. That research is done. Outstanding. What did we research now? More of the giant tortoise. Keep on working on that, if you please. Education rating is still at a three star. We want to keep pushing that higher and higher. All right, no new visitors. Our inspector is walking around en route to Habitat 11. So here is our inspector in the old part of the zoo. And this is, uh, yeah, it looks like she just got here. And she's uh, navigating through this mass of humanity. We've got 5,848 people in the zoo f so far. And these are like the widest paths we got. If we wanted to really, like, get into it, we could, like, get rid of this wall, push these back, and then make a dedicated sort of loop that people would, uh, you know, get their, their food from. That way they're not blocking this whole freaking mess. But it is what it is. So Habitat 11 to go see BU. Oh, that's not good. BU has been uh, injured. So hopefully, hey vet, come here. If we can get, now that's going to be interesting. If we can get the vet here to take care of our Formosan black bear who has been injured, um, what will the vet or the inspector do? Will the inspector see another animal? Or will we just get like a zero star rating for that particular animal because they're not there? Um, that's a question. Has our inspector made it to see BU yet? No, she's on her way. No, nope, now she's going to Habitat 6 to see Natalia 280. That's not a impartial name whatsoever. Please don't be dead, Natalia 280. Wake up, Natalia 2. Okay, I saw the ears flick. Yeah, she's okay. Uh, we could use some more enrichment, and I don't know if we've actually researched any more enrichment since. Uh, okay, so we need some food. Do we know any other food enrichment that would be good for a Siberian tiger? That would be something to look at. Hopefully make her just a little bit happier right here before the... Uh, so we got the blood pumpkin. How about the blood scent marker? Is that a... No, that's not a food, unfortunately. Dang it. Uh, we got blood pumpkin. Oh, prey scented snack. Let me take a look at the enrichment and see if the prey scented snack was already here. Yeah, we've already got the prey scented sack. So not a whole lot of other uh, food enrichment besides that blood pumpkin that we know so far. So that might be some more research that we can do. Uh, but, I mean, overall, Natalia 280 is okay. Hopefully the inspector would be fine. Still en route to Habitat 6. Okay. Where is, where is she at? Oh, perfect. So you can see perfectly fine what's going on. Uh-oh, Red Panda is about to die of old age. Uh, Bowzai. Where in the world is Bowzai? This tree. Did the tree die? No, right there at the base of the tree. Yeah, right at the base of the tree, Bowzai has kicked the bucket. I'll tell you, the, what is going on with my mouse today? All right, let's look for the other red panda. Make sure that the red panda's social group is fine. Okay, so Ying Tai is fine by herself. But if we can get another red panda in here, a male red panda, that would be very, very cool. Let's make sure we can do that. Red panda. Red panda. Do you have any males that we can snag from you? 300 conservation credits, 129 conservation credits. Not not fertile, the least little bit. Uh, how about you for 159? 33% fertile. From Weeping Willows. We'll go ahead and adopt from Weeping Willows. All right, so we'll move this red panda in here. Schedule that delivery. 
Oh nice, mechanic research is done. Our mechanic continuing to work on, that is the last bit of shelters and climbing. All right, so possibly habitats then. Uh, let's get Brendan on some habitats. Maybe we can get some pre, uh, no, staff facilities. Staff facilities for sure. Uh, the large quarantine and the large research center allowing us to do more research. That seems like it would have a good uh, return on investment. All right, de-stress. Go find yourself a, uh, a hidden area here there, Tanakh. Hey, Tanakh, you can hide like, yeah, there you go. Get behind the, the get behind the opaque wall. Or there, that, 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 that would be fine. Maybe. All right, so stress is gone. Just like that, de-stress. Hello, Marie Chin Claire Chin. Marie Chin Claire Chin. Sweet, so we get a little bit of our conservation credits back. All right, how is our inspector doing? Oh nice, five star from Habitat 6. Going to see Nigabile. So who is Nigabile? Our hippo. All right, hippo, Nigabile. Nigabile, enrichment. All right, so we need more food enrichment before the inspector gets here. Food enrichment is the way to go. We only know about the barrel feeder. Did we somehow unlock any more enrichment for the hippopotamus? Let's just take a look, see if we can get the hippo up to... So we got the barrel feeder, the mud bath, the rubbing pillar. We got the sprinkler. Let's put the rubbing pillar in here. And that's going to be 70% enrichment. We already got the scent marker. And probably the mud bath would not do anything for us. We need more food enrichment for the hippos. Vet research is done. On the tortoise, only one more block. And we'll fully research that tortoise. So yeah, we're at a three star animal rating, all because of that food enrichment, unfortunately. Um, and we don't really know much. Oh crap, who dead now, Renan. Oh, our anteater, Renan, has kicked the bucket. Where is our other anteater? And are they fine by themselves? And can we get another one? Empty. All right, so we definitely need to get a few more anteaters in here then, if we can. All right, reset all filters, please. Let's get in some anteaters. And they're prob- oh, was that it? Uh, giant anteater, okay. So we've get, just got a male. Uh, can the males live happily by themselves? Yes, they can. That answers my question. Let's get then a male anteater in here. Uh, let's see, 8.3 years, 6.4 years. Yes, we'll get the younger one. And move that anteater right there into habitat 14, please. So we can try to uh, get that anteater in before, say, these signs go away. But the vet has uh, picked up our deceased anteater. And since an anteater is moving in, does that reset our exhibit to basically, yes, it does. So once our anteater comes in, we'll have to reset all of our education items here. So I'll just stay put for now. Next vet research is done. That is the second part of the Bornean orangutan. And there is a lot to research on that Bornean orangutan for sure. Uh, that is Angelique. Let's put Angelique on the... Who are we researching with Angel... Or... Okay, so the tortoise. Angelique will be on the tortoise. Noel will be on the Bornean orangutan. Just to, to speed that along. Just sort of switch them up a bit. All right, where is our giant ant eater? Here it comes. All right, clear the way. Oh, I thought this uh, this uh, zoo or this caretaker had a hat on, but that's just her hair. Habitat 14. Uh, Catalina Marrero. All right, so everything should be set up and awesome. Yeah, our giant ant eater uh, hops right in like a dirty shirt. Giant ant eater. 
Giant Anteater is back. A Siberian Tiger about to die of old age. We'll take a look at that Siberian Tiger's um, uh, counterparts just to make sure that the Siberian Tiger can live comfortably where we have. In loving memory of Alyosha. So looking at Natalia, yeah, Natalia can live on her own, but it would be nice to get a male Siberian Tiger back in here. So let's reset those filters and get another Siberian in here to sort of take up the mantle of Alpha if we can. All right, a male for 286, a male for 330, a male for 1300. Are there any cash males? Doesn't look like it so far. Lots of pages of Siberian Tiger. Uh, let's just do cash listings. Filter. Uh, max will be 10,000. Minimum will be, yeah. So refresh. All right, so no cash. Conservation credits, minimum zero. Max three, let's go 400 filter. All right, so the cheapest male is right here, four minutes away. Can we adopt Stefan? Can we get Stefan in here for 286? Yes. Who? Tell you what. All right, so Stefan will be moved in with Natalia 280. And I wonder why she's named 280. Is it, uh, not sure. Oh, red, another red panda died, Ying Tai. So it looks like all of our red pandas are dying. How is our social welfare with the red panda? Okay, so Yang Lian, the male. We need a female red panda in here if we can. Yeah, this is the part of the, the game where everyone seems to be dying at about the same time. Red panda, and we need to get a female. All right, so we've got a female for 190. We cannot afford a 79, no 60. We're just short of these conservation credits here. Once we log in and we get 100 conservation credits next time, we'll be able to uh, to purchase a female, or if we can say hello to another visitor. But unfortunately, no. Uh, we might be able to get rid of a crazy animal. Uh, let's see, how about, so that is a female common ostrich, we have a male common ostrich. Any more ostriches running around? So a common ostrich there at 11.25 female. And our other female, 11.25 bronze. So this right here looks common. Can we release to the wild force? No, not for 13 conservation credits, not going to happen. How about these warthogs? So a common warthog, 750 appeal male. Yeah, that's only seven conservation credits. That is not good at all. That research done. And that is the giant tortoise done. Noel is still working on the Bornean orangutan, but let's get uh, Stella researching. How about the hippos? That way we can learn possibly what other food enrichment item that they need. Uh, we learn about that at level three. And then we learn another one at level seven. So eventually we will learn a new food enrichment item. No one new is visiting, unfortunately. Yeah, so I'll park over here by the red panda so I remember that we need a new red panda. And where exactly was the red panda? Over... Tell you, this thing is getting so big, I'm losing track of where everybody is. Broken barrier? Who's got broken barrier? Is that the elephants? That's the freaking elephants. Tell you what, these elephants are unruly. We're going to have to call a mechanic. And if this elephant gets out, we're just going to have to, uh, to lace her up real quick. Tell you what, you guys are bold. And then... This lady looked like she wasn't even wearing a shirt. There we go. Mechanic is on the job. Is this a, 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 good, a good mechanic? Yeah. Cindy, 
the level three mechanic working on repairing that barrier. It's almost like the elephants knew that the barrier was weak and they're just like, hey, let's test this thing out, bam. All right, so that will do it for me in this episode. We have our uh, Japanese macaw and they're all chilling around that ice block getting some fruit. Outstanding, good to see, they're all nice and happy. At the start of the next episode, we'll pull up another red panda and continue building, uh, as it were. And our inspector uh, should be done. So Habitat 17, yeah, four star rating for our hippo, because we don't have that food rating, or that, uh, that extra food enrichment that we will uh, research shortly enough. But that will do it for me. Like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I will see you in the next Planet Zoo video. Take care.